The year was 1848. James Polk was president. Lawman and gunslinger Wyatt Earp was born. Wisconsin became the 30th state, and a stone house was built on a 160-acre property owned by Jonathan and Mary Clark. 134 years later, in 1982, the Jonathan Clark House became a museum, and to this day remains a place to preserve and share history of early settlers to communities we now know as Mequon and Thienesville. Michael Schlesinger discovers the true essence of this historic landmark and the direction its new executive director wants to take it for future generations. Where Bonnewell and Cedarburg Roads and Mech One come together beyond the hustle and bustle of modern day life is a nostalgic nugget from the 1840s. Welcome to the Jonathan Clark House Museum where we bring history to life and experience 1848, which is the year we became the state of Wisconsin. Come on in. Assistant Director and Co-Curator of the Jonathan Clark House Museum, Nina Look, is my personal tour guide of the site. Not a replica per se, but a recreation. All right, so I have to ask, which room resonates with you the most? Well, I love all of them, but yeah. let me show you the pantry. This really expresses the life of the, the Clark family. So this is one of my favorite pieces. This is the firkin. Actually, it would be used for storage. Here's another piece that I like, and this is something we do with children. It's called a lap mill. You might call it a coffee mill. The two-story home housed the Clark family, including Jonathan, his wife Mary, and their eight kids. I guess we had a chance to create something without a lot of boundaries. The house was built in the Greek Revival style with various types of stones making up the structure, including fieldstone and limestone. This is really a testament to the quality of workmanship. He was so proud of what was built, he left a mark, and I'm told he wanted to share it with others. And it's unusual because the front door here is on the gable end, and that's usually if you had a church or a school or meeting hall. So we think that Jonathan wanted this to be a place to, for the community to meet, and that he was very proud, so proud that he put his name on this stone. I'm sure Mr. Clark had an office. Yes. You said it's over yes, here. Yes, it's right here, come on in. This is a real fun room to children to show them what it would be like um, in an office like this. So we have the children sit on the chair, pretend they're Jonathan, and we explain everything that's here. The uh, census reports, his work with the, the uh, road building, his visits to the mill in Cedarburg, and development of the, the school, of the one-room school, which is right down the road. The office reveals so much about the man. We also love maps. These are two really wonderful maps. This is one uh, that has a little arrow here. That's Derby, Vermont. That's where Jonathan came from. It's on the Quebec border in Canada. From there, he uh, enlisted in the Army out of Utica, New York, and then ended up here at Fort Howard, which is now uh, Green Bay. Once he settled in southeast Wisconsin, he was a farmer by trade and a businessman. He was a road supervisor and helped create the local school district. I think people would respect him as they respect other uh, individuals that have leaders in the community. It's a piece of living history. Executive Director of the museum, Dana Hansen, has only been on the job a year now. Since she's taken over the reins, she's extended hours of operation, including the first Friday and second Saturday of each month. She's also added her touch with different programming, including a fall harvest celebration and various cooking classes. People see us, um, not just in Ozaki County, but in southeastern Wisconsin, as a valuable educational resource where they can come and know that they can learn about their history. And it's learning history, those with the museum contend, can make us better looking ahead. A lot of people like to say that history is cyclical. I really feel it's more like a pendulum. So that pendulum swings and a lot of things come back and it swings back in reaction. So if you learn how those reactions happen, you can learn how to better make, make your future, I think. Clark died when he was only 45, but this place, some consider an architectural and historical treasure, will work to keep his legacy intact for generations to come. Some museums are kind of stagnant. Once you've seen it, you don't nearly need to go back. But here, you need to come back because there's always something new to show and to learn, something new happening. And so we're very, very much alive here. 